and a good morning to all of you here in the room and joining us online. Welcome to Magnify. I want to give a special welcome to all the kids in the room. Thank you for joining us and be prepared for a special time for you this morning. You know, we serve a great God who is the author of our faith. He is almighty God and he is our healer. Let's spend the next hour just pointing up to him and lifting his name today. Let's get to our feet as we sing, all right? So we want to hit your hearts. Here we go. We welcome the healer in this place. We welcome the author of our faith. We welcome the God who makes a way. His name is Jesus. His name is Jesus. Come like you want to. Falling now like heaven's rain, enthroned upon your children's place. You're tearing down the barricades. Sing it as we say, we welcome the healer in this place. We welcome the
Amen. He's our healer. He makes way. Give him some praise. That's cool. Do it. Lift him up. We're here to worship him this morning. And you know, as we, as we come, sometimes we bring fear in our hearts and we can't see past our own fear. But God makes a way for us. He says, cast your fear on me. Cast your cares on me, for I care for you. In the Bible, some 365 times, he says, fear not. Let the words of this song, let it be a witness to you this morning as we sing it out. I don't want to be afraid every time I face the waves. I don't want to be afraid. I don't want to be afraid. I don't want to fear the storm just because I hear it roar. I don't want to fear the storm. I don't want to fear the storm. Peace be still, say the word and I will send my feet upon the sea till I I'm not gonna be afraid Cause these waves are only waves I'm not gonna be afraid No, I'm not gonna be afraid And I'm not gonna fear the storm You are greater than its roar I'm not gonna fear the storm
peace over your people as we stand here and sing and worship your name, Lord. We are constantly amazed at the story of your son and how he came to earth to be born of a virgin and yet to die as a man and be resurrected as Christ our Savior. Mm, Lord Jesus, let's sing. Behold the Father's heart The mystery He lavishes on us As deep cries out too deep how desperately he wants us the things of earth stand next to him like a candle to the sun unfailing father what compares to his great Holy Son, the Lion and the Lamb given to us. The Word became a man that my soul should know its Savior. Forsaken for the sake of all men. Is in his blood, Jesus Messiah, the righteous die for love. Yes, it wasn't over, for he is the Then see 
come, prepare the way until the work on earth is done. Watch as the clouds he rides swing low, lift up the sound as he makes our praise his throne. Behold the Lord, our God, will lead us home. Then sings my soul. Indeed, you may be seated. Thank you for that beautiful sound coming from all of your voices. My name is Bryn, and welcome to Magnify. I'm part of the team here. I work with anything related to children. Speaking of children, we have a adjusted programming this morning. And so first through sixth graders are here with us in this space this morning. Yeah, so if you're near one of those kids, be sure to welcome them. High five. Children, we are so glad to have you here with us this morning. And uh, we have had a couple of pretty fantastic events that some of you have participated in. And, and the first one I want to talk about is Code Breaker, which took place about a week ago. We had 170 fifth and sixth graders come to have really intense puzzle solving and some mind bending challenges, tactile team endeavor, endeavors. And this place was full of excitement and energy. And then this last Friday, we had Zone Zero, where 226 third and fourth graders came, ate 550 pieces of pizza, 300 slushies, 24 of which were consumed by one child. So if you're here, please let us see the color of your tongue this morning. Um, but they enjoyed laser tag and obstacle courses, escapes rooms. But here's the thing, with both of these events, the vast majority of the children who attended them do not belong to Magnify Church with their church home. So that means third through sixth graders are inviting their friends to come to these events because the main focus is the sharing of the gospel so that children can hear that Jesus loves them, has died to save them, wants to be their savior and live with them forever. 12 Bibles were given out and 12 children then came and prayed with our staff members to accept Christ. So this is outstanding and we just rejoice. We thank you children for inviting your friends to come to church. Awesome, awesome, awesome. Praise God. And men, guess what? It's your turn this Friday. We have a game night for you. Please sign up on our website. We will have games of all kinds. Can't promise the slushies, but please check it out. Um, but we are reaching the pinnacle of our story here at the end of this month. We want to celebrate Easter together, and we will enjoy the Easter story putting on in dramatic fashion. Tickets are on sale. Please be in prayer about who you can invite, who, who doesn't know Jesus as their Savior. And we look forward to celebrating the resurrection of Jesus together as a church. This is only possible because of those of you who partner with us financially, who obey God and take the money that he's given you and return it to the work of the local church so we can be the hope and the healing of the world. So we're very grateful. Will you pray with me? Father, how great your love is. How great your love is. 
over and over again, we could sing that, how great your love is. It's astounding, and it reaches into new places of our hearts this morning. Um, and we need that because of the ways we've sinned against you, the ways we've sinned against each other, the ways we have forgotten your story, gone our own way this week. And so to be able to have those words roll over us again, wow, take it in. So we're humbled again to be your kids, and uh, we are in need of you desperately. We get to hear your word again today. We get to be shoulder to shoulder with uh, family members, people who are broken, just like us, are in need of rescue, and yeah, here we come to worship you together. So what a privilege, and in this privilege, we get to bring all of ourselves, and that includes the, the devastation in our lives, and many here have, are grieving. Um, people they've lost, who they love, and just are suffering, and, and um, whether that be relationally or physically, longing for healing, wondering if it will ever come. Thank you for being a God who cares about this, who leans in to our hurts. <laughs> Would you please be so kind and make a home, inhabit our pain, help us to be a church that laments well, that is slow with others who are in pain. Listen well to reflect the heart of the Father to the brokenhearted. <clears throat> and uh, I want to pray for our global partners, um, Tim and Andrea Blazer, who are in Brazil, and um, they are seeing people come to know Jesus as their Savior. We praise you for this. What encouragement. You just sense it in the tone of their voice and even just talking about people sharing the gospel out in the front porches of homes and how that's been contagious. And so we just pray that that would further um, their work, your mission there through them, that you would be an encouragement to them. And just like we ask of that ourselves here as we come and learn more about Jesus and who he wants to be to those of us who are in need of healing. We love you and we ask this in the name of Jesus. Amen. Good morning. Well, if you have a Bible with you, you don't need to pick it up yet. Okay? But we're going to be in the book of Luke, but first and foremost, I want to, <clears throat> I too want to welcome the first through sixth graders who are not normally in here, and you're in here with us, and that's fantastic. We love it. And, um, there's a number of reasons we do this, but one of the prime reasons we do this from time to time is uh, equipping the youngest generation to follow Christ is one of the most important things we do as a church. And so from time to time, we like to emphasize that as a church, we want to partner with families to equip you to do discipling within your home. And that's where the best and most thorough and most convincing discipleship happens is in our own home. So this morning, what we're going to do, um, we get to set that aside. We'll come back to it in just a minute. But instead of reading the story to begin, I'm going to frame our morning. Because what we're going to do this morning is we're going to work through a story together. And for those first through sixth graders, um, hopefully you all have a little brown paper bag that you got within when you came in. If you did not, if there is a first through sixth grader who does not possess one of these bags, please raise your hand and we'll bring one around because we'd like you all to be able to participate. And I peeked and there are some fruit snacks in there. So even if you don't want the bag, there's fruit snacks. So... Um, <laughs> 
This is what we're going to do this morning. I am going to take us through the next story in Luke. He's going to heal a leper. And I'm going to tell the story as a story. And then I'm going to have you guys do it. And we're going to work through this together. And then I'll walk us through the story in more detail. And then in that bag for you first through sixth graders, there's a few things I'll have you do as we go along. And you can color and do different things, but there are are some stickers in there and I'll give you directions as we go. Okay, makes sense? And if you're joining us on live stream, uh, this is pretty participative and we're gonna just encourage you to do, uh, to participate at home. And if if you've got other people watching with you, this will work great. If you're all by yourself, it'll still work great. You'll just have to uh, kind of do things uh, to yourself, but know that you're participating in in a larger exercise here. Before I tell this story, I want to give you just a couple minor details. First of all, Jesus is going to heal a leper. Now, we kind of hear that word, but we don't all know exactly what a leper is, particularly back in Jesus' day. And what a leper was in Jesus' day is it could be any number of diseases that would show up on the skin. You could see leprosy, and it would start small, and it would usually grow and spread, and, and different forms of it would, could be very devastating to a person's health. But a person who had leprosy was, was uh, determined to be unclean. And they're unclean because um, to be in God's presence, you need to be pure without sin. And... Anytime there was disease, particularly disease that was visible, well, disease exists because of our sin. And so to have a visible disease would make somebody not only physically harmed, but they would be spiritually unclean. And so what a leper would have to do is they couldn't be by other people. And they had to warn people who were coming near them that they were unclean. And nobody would touch them, because if you touched a leper, you would be unclean yourself then. So they were by themselves, and they had to warn people to keep away from them. So keep that in mind as we go through this story. Now I'm going to tell our story. And Jesus is in the Galilee region. He's by Capernaum and in the north end of the Sea of Galilee. And there's lots of little towns and cities around. And when Jesus was in one of their cities, there was a man who was full of leprosy. And when he saw Jesus, he fell on his face and he said, Lord, if you will, you can make me clean. And Jesus reached out and he touched him and said, I will be clean. And immediately the leprosy left him. And Jesus charged the man to tell no one, but go see the priest and make an offering for your cleansing according to the law of Moses as a proof to them of your healing. But even more word about Jesus spread abroad And huge crowds were gathering to hear him and have him heal all their infirmities. But Jesus retreated to desolate places to pray. That's the end of our story. 
What I'd like you to do now, whether you're at home or here, is get in groups, maybe it's your family or uh, two of you, um, and w- what I want us all to do is I'm going to give us a couple minutes, and I want everybody in your little group to take a turn and try and tell the story that I just told as best you can. Now, you're not going to remember every detail exactly. However, that's not the point. You're not being graded. But take a few minutes and tell the story. And if uh, you can, just get in groups of two or more, and we'll take the the time to do that. And then I'll pull us back together uh, to talk about it some more. Okay? Ready? Begin. About 30 more seconds. Okay. Sorry if I'm cutting some of you off, but that's okay. We're going to keep going through this story together. So, all right. So now I'm going to take us through the story again, piece by piece. So I'll lead us now. And you just answer me as I give you different prompts. So the story begins, Jesus is in one of their cities. And a man... What did he have? Leprosy. And how how much leprosy did he have? What does it say? A lot. He was full of leprosy. And when he saw Jesus, what did he do? Fell down. Fell on his face. Very good. Good detail. He fell on his face begging. And he said, what did he call Jesus? Lord. If you will, you can make me clean. Well, Jesus, what did he do? First, he reached out and he touched him. And he said, I will be clean. 
And the leprosy left him a few days later. No. Immediately, the leprosy left him. And Jesus said to the man, tell everybody. No, he said, don't tell anybody. But go to the priest and make an offering for your cleansing. As is written in the law of who? Moses. As proof to them, the priests. But even now, word more and more went abroad. And what did the people do? Huge crowds came to see Jesus to hear him. And what else? To be healed of their infirmities. And Jesus, but Jesus went where? Desolate places to do what? Pray. Excellent. You guys got it. We need you kids in here every week. You guys are nailing this thing. I love it. So the, this is the story. Now you've heard me tell it. You've told it, and we've gone through it together. We've actually gone through the story three times, but now we're going to go to it bit by bit together. And this is where, uh, for you um, kids that are with us, I want you to access your bags, okay? And in your bags, one of the things in there uh, is a little thing with red stickers. And I want you to very appropriately put those stickers on your arms or legs, wherever you want them, because they are going to represent, they're going to be the leprosy. And practice doing this. Go unclean and wave your arm like this. Unclean. Do that. Go ahead. Unclean. John, thank you. <laughs> Unclean. And that tells people to keep uh, away from you. And so we're, we're going to now start going through the... Oops, I went too fast. Let's come back here. While he was in one of the cities, there came a man full of leprosy. And when he saw Jesus, he fell on his face and he begged him. Well, what I want you to do now, I want you to just get back in the little group you were in before. Uh, and again, if you're home on live stream, uh, whoever's there with you, do this together. And I want you to talk through some questions. Uh, first, uh, talk about what did the leper do when he saw Jesus? And second, what should he have done? Okay, so take a minute. We're just going to take one minute and talk about that. Well, what did the leper do? We kind of know that. We've gone through that already, right? He fell on his face right by Jesus. Well, what should he have done? He shouldn't have gone near Jesus, right? He should have been saying, unclean, unclean, and, and warned people away. But he doesn't do that. Something in him is compelling him to go towards Jesus. And the leper begged Jesus, Lord, if you will, you can make me clean. Well, here are a few more questions I want us to talk about. Just from what we just 
read. What did he call Jesus? What could, and this, I want you to talk about this amongst yourself, what are some other things that people call Jesus? Because the leper could have called him any number of things. And what does the leper's posture tell you about him? So take another minute, a minute and a half, and talk about these questions. Okay, let's come back together. And even if I cut you off, you guys are still answering. That's good because as we go through this story so much, you're going to find even as you leave here today, that story is going to linger. And I want you to allow it to do that and keep uh, answering and asking questions, even ones we, we didn't uh, address this morning. Well, we, you guys rightly answered, what did he call Jesus? He called him, say it. Lord, what could he have called him? What are some other things he could have called him? Rabbi, Jesus, teacher. Yeah, he, excellent. You guys, you guys are very good. There's a lot of things he could have called him. And one thing I like to do when I study the Bible and somebody's addressing Jesus, I like to think about what they call him because that's going to be very important as to what's going on in their heart, okay? So, uh, kids, you should have in your bag a little uh, paper with this scripture on it. And I want you to take one of your crayons and I want you to circle the word Lord. The fact that the leper calls Jesus Lord tells us something very important about where his heart is and who he thinks Jesus is. And it also helps us understand why instead of warning this man away and staying clear of him, he chooses to do what he's not supposed to do. He chooses to go near him. And what does the leper's posture tell you about the leper? Desperate, that's a great word. This man is desperate. He didn't walk up to Jesus and say, hey, could I have a word with you for a minute? I got this little problem, it's kind of personal, and let's come over here, and he doesn't. He falls on his face, and he's begging. He's desperate. Think about his life. The second they see that he has leprosy, and he has it, uh, uh, it's all over him. So he's had it for a while, years probably. And the second they saw it on him, he is removed from being with people. His whole life is changed. Have you ever been desperate for something? How about you kids? You ever get desperate for something? Where you you begged your mom and dad? (laughs) Begged your grandparents? This man is desperate even in a much more personal way. It's his whole life. And then... Jesus stretched out his hand and he touched him, saying, I will be clean. And immediately the leprosy left him. Well, 
let's discuss, I have two questions. Let's take them one at a time and stay in your groups. Think of other stories in the Bible that you know. What other ways do you know that Jesus healed? So here in this story, he reached out and touched him. But what are other ways that Jesus healed people? So go ahead and talk and I'll give you a minute. Okay, hopefully you got a few out there. There's a lot of different ways he healed, aren't there? One time, a lady in a crowd just touched his garment, and she was healed. One time, a blind man, Jesus spit in the mud, or spit in the dirt, made mud, and put it on the guy's eyes, and he was healed. One time, a centurion told him, you don't even have to call, come to my house. Just say the word here, and my, my servant will be healed. And he did. So did Jesus have to touch him to heal him? No. no. In fact, we know from that that the touch was on top of the healing. So that leads to another question. Why did Jesus touch him? So take a minute and discuss why you think he touched him. Okay, that's good. So why did Jesus touch him? Let me ask you a few more questions, and you don't need to answer out loud, but just think about this. When was the last time this man had been touched by another human being? Years. Kids, you like... Hugging <clears throat> your parents. You like getting that hug every day? Do you like wrestling with your buddies or playing games where you touch your friends? And what if you couldn't do that anymore? Never. Nobody's touching you. And now Jesus doesn't just heal him, he touches him. The first touch of human flesh to his flesh in probably years. If you remember at the start, what happens if you touch a leper? The leper's unclean, right? What, what did I say if you touch a leper? You become unclean. 
What I want you to do now, you should have in your bag or somewhere on a sheet a picture of Jesus. And wherever you put those red stickers on, where you, you were symbolizing leprosy on you, I want you to put them on Jesus. Because Jesus is now unclean. Right? The leper was unclean when they met, and Jesus was clean. But now, because he touched him and healed him at the same time, the leper is now clean, but Jesus is unclean. And this is very important because Jesus is sending a message to everyone. The, the miracle is for the leper. He's getting a gift uh, that is immeasurable. <laughs> it's going to bring him uh, com- joy beyond comprehension. But this miracle is for the priest, too, to see something. But it's for us to understand something. And the purpose that Jesus came to die for our sins and to be resurrected is that so through faith, you and I can be clean in the most important way. We can be cleansed from our sin. And so what happens is this. At the start, Jesus, he's, he's righteous, And we have sin. And like the leper who has leprosy, we have sin, which is even deeper than leprosy. It's part of our heart. But because of the cross, when we come to Jesus in faith, our sin goes to Jesus. And he already went to the cross, so the punishment needed for our sin goes to the cross through the person of Jesus just because we have faith that he is the Son of God. And not only that, but his righteousness comes on to us. And think of it, kids, if you... If you um, you go out and you play and you, and you, you muddy your, all your clothes in a way <clears throat> that you can't get them clean. You try and clean them off before your parents see them and you can't get it off. And then they wash them and it won't come out. And, and uh, imagine at that point just being given a new set of clothes that's all clean. And you were going to go to this party, and because your clothes were ruined, you couldn't go. But now you get this new, clean set of clothes, and you get to go to the best party ever with your most favorite person ever. That's what salvation is. And that's why Jesus touched the leper, so we could understand how Salvation works, and what's happening? He takes our uncleanness. He takes it to the cross, and he died for it. So his righteousness, his cleanness could come onto us. And now there's, the story goes on. He told him to tell no one, but go and show yourself to the priest and make an offering for for your cleansing as Moses commanded for a proof to them. This miracle's for the priests. Don't tell a bunch of people, go do this. Now, when demons wanted to talk about him, he ordered them to be quiet and he forced them to not be able to speak. But here, he doesn't force the man The man gets to choose, and somehow, someway, he decides to tell people. But he wants them to go 
and there's the law of Moses says to do certain things and make an offering and prove your cleansing. He has to prove he's clean, but he says is proof to them. He's, he's got to prove it to the priest, but Jesus is also sending a message to the priest that the healer who can make our worst sin clean is here. And it's Jesus. And he absorbed that uncleanness. Who made Jesus clean after he did? God. His Father is going to make him clean because he's going to take that punishment on our behalf. Here's how the story goes now. But now, even more, the report about him went abroad, and great crowds gathered to hear him and to be healed of their infirmities. But he would withdraw to desolate places and pray. So now, because of these crowds, Jesus' ministry is to teach. He does miracles, but his main ministry is to teach that our deepest need is not our sickness. It's not our leprosy. Those are terrible things, but they're a result of the real problem we have and our real problem, the deepest problem, the eternal problem is our sin. And he wants to teach that. But the crowds are coming and they want healing. And so Jesus goes to desolate places to pray. Jesus is in charge of this mission, not the people. And he knows what's most effective to get the word out about eternal life through faith in him. So as we think about this story, there's more to this story that we aren't touching on. But when you look in the world around you, think about it. Do you see the need for cleansing from sin? Do you see sinful people around you? And talk about in what ways you see it. Maybe it's just a friend who hurt your feelings or a sibling who hurt your feelings or, or you fell down and got hurt or things like that, but then you see things in the news and bigger and worse things and you see it all around. But how about inside of you? Do you see it inside of you? Do you see modern day lepers? Oh, we don't see the disease. But everywhere are people who need to be cleansed from their sin. Everybody does, and only Jesus can do it. But what about you? Have you done that yet? Have you come to Jesus in faith? And once you come to him in faith, you get this new set of clean clothes, his righteousness, but we still sin sometimes and we have to come back to him not to get a whole new set of clothes, but now he will cleanse every spot we put on ourselves with sin when we confess it. Well, this is a storyteller series and I don't have a video this morning. I actually have an audio. I actually met in a way a modern day leper, but I didn't know it when I met him. We were in North Africa. I can't go into a lot of detail about exactly what country and names and different things like that, but uh, we had a guy give us a private tour of some uh, biblical historic sites and different things, really enjoyed it. But then uh, uh, afterwards, I invited the man to have lunch with us, and he did. And at one point, um, it became obvious through our, converse, our tour that he was a believer. And, I, and this is in a country with, with like hardly any believers. There's only, they estimate, between two and 4,000 believers in a whole country of millions of people. And he was from that country. And I asked him, 
how he came to be a believer, and he told me this story, and it was so moving, I asked him to record it and send it to me, and I got permission to share it anonymously. And so now, we're going to take about five minutes or so and listen intently to this man's story. I became a follower of Jesus in 2008 when I was 24 years old. I'm from a Muslim country and I grew up in a very poor family. My childhood was full of violence and abuse. In my life, I have experienced all types of abuse, all of them. When I was in my 20s, I entered into a really dark depression because of the abuse I experienced as a child. I started to cry out, to scream to my creator, asking him why he allowed me to have this horrible life. I cry out with no answer. I remember feeling like I was in a dark tunnel with no end in sight. It was death. In 2008, in the heat of my depression, I was working at a call center and God sent an intern to work at my desk with me. She told me she was a Christian. I had never known a Christian before. She was from my country and we are all Muslims. But when she told me this, I felt like I had to know more. I felt it was a good thing. I asked her to bring me the book of the Christians. I didn't even know the name of the book. She brought me the New Testament. I took the book. I remember the first time that I had it, I randomly started to turn the pages on the train on my way back home. I read many things, but I kept seeing the words I am on every page that I randomly turned. I felt like I was hearing the words I am like a voice was telling me I am. I know you. Fear not. Follow me. I am he. Who heard you when you cried out to me? I knew at that moment that this was the voice of my Creator. I didn't know Islam or Christianity, but I knew this was the voice of my Creator, the one who knew me. But in me there was still some doubt, because I had always been told that God was the God of the Islam. So when I got home, I put the Quran and the New Testament under my pillow. And I asked this voice to help me understand who God is. That night, I had a dream and I saw myself in the mirror. My face was really disfigured with many sores and blood. And it was really hard to look at myself. And I saw a bright white hand like a cloud come and clean part of my face and the skin became new, like a baby skin. And I understand that my creator was telling me that this was the beginning of my healing. I knew it was Jesus, that he would heal me. After a few more days, he gave me another dream. I saw myself in the middle of a large ancient Colosseum. And I was sitting at a desk with other students taking an exam. But as I looked at the questions on the exam, I knew that I couldn't answer a single one correctly. I knew I was going to fail the exam. As I was taking the exam and realizing that I would fail, my professor came by my desk and signed my paper and told me, and he like whispered to me that I had passed and I could leave. I couldn't believe it. 
I looked at my paper and I realized that my professor's signature was shining red ink. He had signed with his own blood. Night after night, God gave me more dreams like this that helped me understand the story of Jesus and how he rescues people. And I want to tell you all that I did not have to compare Islam and Christianity within my mind. Following Jesus is not a matter of religions. My Creator found me in my brokenness and He healed me. I am not a Muslim who became a Christian. I was dead and now I am alive. I was an orphan and my father adopted me. <laughs> and that is the story of the leper. And that's the story of all of us. We don't just enter a religion. We go from death to life. We're cleansed by our faith in Jesus. What I'd like you to do is just we, uh, over the week and even today, talk more with whoever you're talking with today and wrestle with that question. Where do you see the need for cleansing around me, but where do I see it in me? Let's stand together and we're going to recite the scripture as our closing uh, prayer, and then the worship team will end us. But thank you again, all you kids who were part of this this morning. Follow with me. Create in me a clean heart, O God, and renew a right spirit within me. Cast me not away from your presence, and take not your Holy Spirit from me. Restore to me the joy of your salvation, and uphold me with a willing spirit. Amen. Wherever you come from this morning, whatever you're wrestling with, maybe you're at the beginning and you're just looking for healing, maybe you're on the journey, let's take this next song and sing out of gratitude and return our thanks to Jesus. The mystery of the cross I cannot comprehend The agonies of Calvary Perfect Holy One crushed your son, who drank the bitter cup reserved for me. Your blood has washed away my sin, Jesus, thank you. The Father's wrath completely satisfied, Jesus, thank you. Once you Seated at your table, Jesus, thank you. We have so much to be grateful for, but sing thank you to Him. By your perfect sacrifice, I've been brought near. And your kindness know no end Your blood has washed away my sin Jesus, thank you The Father's wrath completely satisfied Jesus, thank you Once you
for joining us this morning. I pray that you are refreshed and renewed and that you continue looking up out of gratitude for our, to our Savior. If you need prayer for any reason or want to come share with somebody, uh, we have people that will be down front that would love to pray with you and spend some time in the Word. Have a wonderful day. Enjoy your Sunday.